It's come in many shapes and sizes. And many of them look very different than others. And they're all kind of uh, built specifically for the task that they do. Well, in this case, I got to uh, go down and visit an old buddy of mine. I've talked about him in other videos. Captain Courtney Day. He, uh, he and I grew up together on Monhegan Island. We went to school together and as I said in another video, I used to sleep over at his house because he had a TV and we didn't. <laughs> we, we used to like to watch Gilligan's Island together. Anyway, he owns uh, Cape Ann Towing and they, he took me and, uh, on a job they did recently. And as you can see, we're approaching what we call a white ship, or a mega yacht. And uh, this is owned by a, I guess you could say, a beef jerky tycoon. So somebody who uh, sold a lot of beef jerky now has a, a beautiful yacht. And what happens is when they come in from offshore, they have a whole crew with it, runs them and all that sort of stuff. But what happens is that they have to get in really tight quarters. And so it makes a lot more sense that they hire a couple little tugs that are familiar with the area to pilot and pull them around into uh, where they need to go. And in this case, this these guys right here, let me just tell you what they're doing right now. They have a, I don't know, 30, 40 foot tender that they go fishing with and take people on and off. Anyway, they tow that with them. And uh, they were shortening it up and bringing it over. Oh, I'm running out of time, so let me shut up. All right, welcome back. I'm Tim, and this is Tim B at Sea. And as I was saying before, I was got to uh, ride along on a job with uh, Keep and Towing. So anyway, that other tender, they they were shortening up, and uh, they put somebody on the tender that could take that away. And what we're doing is we're going up this channel right here, which is big enough for a boat like that to run. But as we approach a very narrow creek that we go inbound to a shipyard that the ship is, that the mega yacht is going to, you'll see. We put one tug on the front and one tug on the back. And here's Captain Courtney Day right here. And uh, it, it's interesting, you know, we, we both run tugboats. He he actually started, he, he was one of the youngest captains ever made at uh, Sea Corps when he was uh, working for them years ago before he uh, bought this company and he's been running this for, I don't know, 20, 30 years. But anyway, he... Uh, he was showing me that, uh, if you notice, he never touches the steering wheel. He steers everything just by uh, using one engine versus the other. All right, so they're getting ready now to go into the creek. So the stern boat, this is a camera I have on the stern boat with Captain Chris over here. And uh, Captain Chris puts out the lines over here, and then he'll back up. Um, I mentioned this in another video, but let me just... Uh, Restated again. These are like little 26 foot boats that have two John Deere 325 horsepower engines that are swinging like 32 inch four bladed wheels. So they don't go real fast, but man, do they pull. They, they pull like a mule kicking. And uh, anyway, this is Chris backing up and he's going to hand off these lines. Now, by having a tailboat, it, it not only ho helps that you can steer the uh, boat that you're towing because you can, you know, as the, the boat on the bow goes one way, you can have the tailboat pull the other and rotate whatever you're towing around. But as you're just towing it along, uh, you've heard me mention in other videos that uh, tows, you know, that, that you want ass on the tow. And so by adding extra weight here, you can get it to tow straighter as you go through confined spaces. So Chris will set this up and he'll get all set up and ready to go and then uh, Courtney will come in on the bow and you'll see us 
Here we are here now. You can see, I don't have the timing of this exactly right. You can see the tailboat is just backing up to the ship now, or the mega yacht. And uh, Courtney's telling me about how the different tide works around here. And you can see he's going to back right up, never touching the steering wheel at all. And if you, if you notice, I use the wheel a lot. The difference is I have great big barn doors for rudders. And Courtney says that he would use his... his uh, rudder as well, you know, his steering wheel, um, except that he has less than one square foot of ru rudder because these boats were designed to go fast um, before he outfitted them with, you know, uh, huge reduction gears, great big shafts and great big wheels. Now what he's telling me here is that he's backing up and he has to be really careful because this boat actually has a bulbous bow. So there's a part of the, uh, the, the boat that's sticking out underwater and he needs to back up to get these lines, but he doesn't want to back onto that bulbous bow either. Now, those of you that are wondering why I'm not offering a hand, uh, I think that uh, many of us laborers or blue-collar people will tell you that if it's a job we normally do with one person, the second person that tries to help out only gets in the way. So I'm just trying to be there if Courtney needs me, but he certainly doesn't need me. He's done this a thousand times. You, see, you can see him back up here. Now he's going to go and grab the other line. And I'll be quiet here so you can listen to what's going on. steers, he's only going to steer with his engine because he's in reverse and doesn't have blanket on his right. right, right, right. 
Chris, I'm going to have to tell my followers he's on right now. He is on his uh, starboard board. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And he's pulling right, right around. Right, right, and right, as right, soon right. as he gets yeah. his angle, yep, then he'll bring in the other engine for a little extra power. Yep, yep, yep. I'm often amazed at how there are so many different facets or different parts of this industry that require different skill sets. Um, I love the work that I do. Uh, sometimes I miss the wire work. I used to be a guy going up and down the beach all the time towing stuff. And now I'm doing the bunker work, but I've really grown to enjoy the bunker work. But I look at this stuff and <laughs> it's amazing. Um, Courtney and Chris, they do this, and uh, man, I would be dying if I did this. This is a, a pretty hairy thing to do, especially, uh, I, I, I got to think that uh, dealing with clientele that own boats like this might be a, a different skill set that you might need as well. You know, it's funny, uh, I get all excited when I go to shoot something different like this. And uh, I got four cameras and set them all up, and I got all excited about my 360 camera. I was going to pan around and do this, and I got my, my high-definition camera with a dead cat on it. I was going to use that, and then I had my two little teeny GoPro 4s. And the two little GoPro 4s did most of the best shots, I think. So anyway, that's that. Anyway, as you can see, we're getting tighter and tighter in here, and... Uh, this is one of the shots from the 360 camera, just a, um, you know, that I made 2D for you guys. But uh, anyway, as you can see, we do come in and it gets tighter and tighter. And one thing that Courtney explained to me that I hadn't considered before is that another reason why a lot of these boats will hire uh, boats to tow them up into these places is that the the bottom is un. Yeah, I'm not saying they're going to run to ground, but they have great big wheels, and uh, if they stirred anything up, it could get into his intakes and clog things up, and that would be make for a very bad day. So sometimes it's just better, instead of hiring a pilot and that sort of stuff, you just hire the tugs, let the tugs assume the responsibility, and uh, they have all the local knowledge and know when the tide's going to turn and how hard it's going to run and all that sort of stuff, and know where you're going, and... Uh, the skipper of these boats can just relax and let Courtney and his crew take care of things. Watch out to you, chalk drop. Okay, there's nothing really on the wall that's going to affect us. Roger that. So you can see the wall there that he's talking about that we're going to get to, and uh, you know, not that would be a tight thing for just the boat to do, but then when you put a, a tug in front and a tug behind, the tow becomes almost twice as long, 
and Courtney has to get by. He was saying, I don't know if you heard him before, but there, that red ball right there is a shallow spot. So he's got to get up there and swing this thing around. And the, the biggest thing here is, hang on, be quiet. If something was to happen, we'd stir up a bunch of shit on bottom. Yep. You know, we get this heat exchange really overheat. It's very unlikely that would happen. So this is this is an area where I start seeing a lot of similarities with the work that I do. Obviously, I never come into a marina like this towing a white boat. But what I am saying is that right now he's controlling momentum and force, and he needs to keep power on to keep it going because his tailboat is pulling against him to add weight to the tow, and uh, it's a constant juggling thing. Um, when he goes to spin the boat, the boat's going to have. Uh, you know, momentum going in the original direction. So he has to be aware of all those things, and those are things that we have to worry about as well. Very interesting to see this. And then uh, talk about it. You're going to see something here where he's a, a true master boatsman. When you you watch as he's towing all this and using all that horsepower. And if you look at that wall up there. Well, actually, this is going to happen a little bit. He's going to have to shorten up first, and you're going to hear about that. But he's going to go... Okay, now here's the here's the stern tug slowing it down. You can see where they're pulling against him like that. But Courtney is going to go, and without even... Almost as if he didn't even notice it was there, just because he's done this so many times. He goes about three inches away from the Balance floating dock. on the wing. And uh, that's where I'll, you'll see I'll jump off, but... Amazing, and once again, never touching the th touching the wheel, doing it all with the throttles. Master boatsman, Alistair. amazing. Yeah, it's good for you. All right, I'm going to show uh, yeah. you. Can listen. Uh, if you want us to, it's fine too. Just let me know. Oh uh, yeah, you might as well. That's all right. All right, I'm good. I'm going to shorten up here a little bit. Chris, you might want to shorten up. Roger that. Going on the north wall. Which uh, which way are we facing? Sure. Nice. You want me to drop the water or shorten up? Why don't you go ahead and drop the starboard line? So you may have noticed it before, but the mega yacht will have a man on the bow, tending the lines up there and keep an eye on things, and they'll have a couple guys in the stern as well. And here comes that uh, floating dock here on the face over here that uh, 
Courtney's going to get to. And like I say, he never even like perked up. It's almost like he had a sixth sense that he just knew exactly where it was. And I was wondering if I should tell him, hey, hey, you're getting into under a foot over here. Nope, he just brought it over like he's done it a million times before. And uh, it blew my mind. But anyway, I'll shut up again. Now I'm sure you can figure it out, but Courtney has to stay really close to that side because the the mega yacht is still way out there. So he's trying to get it with as much angle as he can to get it swinging towards the dock, but not going too quickly. And as you can see, he's got to go all the way up into the slip in here to what I would consider the great unknown. But like I say, he's probably done this a hundred times before. So <laughs> he makes it look easy, but here's a better shot. You can see all that nastiness of cement and pilings and all the stuff that you wouldn't want to hit. And uh, you know, he just doesn't like, it. not even there, not a big deal for him. Uh, you know, I keep, times like this, I keep thinking of my old Portuguese captain who used to say, find what scares you and do it often and it won't bother you anymore. Courtney certainly wasn't <laughs> Look at that. I'd be dying if that was me up there, but no, Courtney had no problem at all. Then you can see Chris over here. He's getting set up with his line, and then he'll back up to them and push them right over. And that was about it. Anyway, special thanks to uh, Court Captain Courtney Day and uh, everyone over there at Cape Ann Towing. Thank you so much. If you like this video, make sure you uh, smash that like button and uh, ring the bell, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. Thank you so much to our patrons. Um, they're the ones that pay the bills for the channel. We really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the one.